Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives. The only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening. And now, enjoy the show. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. There are two worlds... The first is the one we know. It has rules, it has boundaries, it has structure. For lack of a better name, we call it the real world. The second world, the other world, is always waiting somewhere just beyond the edge of understanding. Perhaps it is perceived most clearly in dreams. It is a world without form or shape, without reason or logic. And that world still threatens to overwhelm us. That world with its demons and dangers and madness. Oh, get in. <gasps> what? Get in, Gwendolyn. How, how do you know my name? I said get in. Who are you? <gasps> yes, that's right, it's a revolver. Now, nobody has to get hurt. Uh, if this is a, a robbery, take my purse. No, love. We want you. But who are you? Why? You play dumb so sweetly, you'll have me crying in a minute. But you're making a mistake. Get in! But I'm not who you think I am. You'll get a fair trial before we get rid of you. We'll at least give you a fair trial. But I... That is enough now, inside, or you'll get it right here. Our mystery drama... The Killer Inside was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Anne Mira. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Uncle Ben's Long Grain and Wild Rice. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Perhaps you know a girl like Gwendolyn. Her mother generally introduces her as my unmarried daughter. What Mama conveniently overlooks is the fact that Gwendolyn may be unmarried because she is the kid who stayed home to look after her parents. Gwendolyn believes in being sensible. The only non-sensible thing that Gwendolyn ever did was to buy a raffle ticket. Although it wasn't completely frivolous either. After all, it was for a charitable cause. However, maybe doing something that isn't completely sensible might be catching because lightning, figuratively speaking, has struck. And Gwendolyn's was the winning ticket. And the prize is a 10-day trip to London. And that's what the argument is about. But you don't have to go on the trip. Mama, that's why I bought the raffle ticket. Well, I understand you can cash it in. But... When will I ever get another chance to see London? Oh, what's there to see in London? Mama, London. London fairly reeks with history. And what's history? The past. And what is the past? It's dead. Look, you should be concerned with the future. You go to London, you spend ten days. It's very chilly. It rains all the time. They have a lot of fried foods. The ten days are over. The whole thing is finished and it's gone forever. Mama. Whereas, if, if you buy yourself a couple of outfits... Mama, I am going to London. Clothes you can wear every day for, for weeks, months, years. Mama, I said... Or, or you can... You can put the money in the bank. Mama, I'm 30 years old. You're only 26. You don't have to lie about my age to me. Look, it's a woman's right. It's her duty, her, her obligation to lie about her age. I'm 30 years old and I've never done anything and I've never gone anywhere. Oh, all right, all right. Be practical. Consider Norman. Norman? 
What about Norman? Can you risk leaving Norman alone for ten whole days? Well, can you? Do you know how long I've known Norman? Exactly three years. Three long years. Three wasted years. Well, it's an investment. You, you have to protect it. What you're saying is, I'm stuck with it. Well, it's your fault if you don't go out with anyone else. I don't go out with anyone else because no one else asks me. Then it's your fault if you don't get around. Isn't that what I'm trying to do now by going to London? But who will you meet in London? A bunch of foreigners. Mama, nothing you can say will make me change my mind. Well, suppose Norman meets somebody else. In ten days? It could happen in ten minutes. Good. He can waste three years of her life. Oh. What's gotten into you? Nothing. Usually you're so sensible. Maybe that's my problem. Oh, well, if you have a problem, you better see Dr. Morris. Oh, please, forget it. If you have a problem, you shouldn't let it fester. Oh, my. Who could that be? Mama, you know perfectly well who it is. Who else could it be? Oh, good, good evening, Gwendolyn. Norman, what a surprise. Yeah. May I come in? What would you do if I said no? I, I don't understand. Why, why would you say no? Oh, don't pay any attention to her, Norman. Her head's in the clouds. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Wilkinson. Oh, we're just about to start on dessert. <laughs> Have some? Yeah, thank you. I will. I saved up 300 calories for you, Mrs. Wilkinson. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, our Gwendolyn is bound for London, Norman. I, I just couldn't talk her out of it. Oh, I think she should go. You do? Oh, yes. It'll be an enriching educational experience. Oh, <laughs> you know, that's exactly what I kept telling her. Now, Quinlan, I've uh, compiled a list of places you mustn't miss. All the important museums. <laughs> you know, I, I understand that London is a very romantic city. Oh, yes. Rich with the romance of history. I also understand it. It's a wonderful place to spend a honeymoon. Mama. Well, look, now, you're both practical, sensible people. And you're as good as engaged, aren't you? Well, uh... Mama. Norman. Norman, dear. Here's a once-in-a-lifetime chance for a half-price honeymoon because her expenses are already paid for. Uh, yeah... But, but, you see, it would be a false economy, Mrs. Wilkinson. We can't afford marriage until I become an associate professor, at which time I'll have tenure. And we'll be able to assume the uh, uh, responsibilities uh, but, of... But, uh, Norman, aren't you afraid to let Gwendolyn go off alone? Why should I be afraid? Well, she could meet some titled Englishman, some some duke. Oh, no, a duke. Even, even an earl isn't looking for plain girls. Really? Huh? Oh, oh, well, what I meant was plain in the uh, uh, generic sense of the word. Meaning ordinary, that is, off the people as opposed to the nobility. It doesn't get any better. <laughs> well, I, I should leave you two alone. I I'm sure you have so much to say to each other. Oh, no, I, 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 I'm, I was just about to leave. I, I have to attend a meeting. But Norman... It's my last evening before the trip. Oh, I, I understand, Gwendolyn, but... Uh, and there's a very artistic Albanian film playing at See, the... but this is a vitally important meeting of the Language Association. I, I'm to read a paper. Oh. oh. I, I thought we would spend the evening together. I... We're always together, my dear. We're always together in spirit. And besides, transoceanic flying is extremely fatiguing. You should get some rest. And Norman is right, Gwendolyn. Well, I suppose so. Oh, it, it's the best way to avoid jet lag. Uh, it, more pie, Norman. No, no, you, you mustn't tempt me. I, oh, well, gee, look, where has the time gone? Suddenly it's late. Uh, have a glorious trip, my dear. And Oh, oh, I, I almost forgot. Do you suppose you might run a, an errand for me while you're in London? An errand? Well, I got a friend. Well, we've never met personally, but we've been corresponding for years. He teaches linguistics at the university. Would you, would you mind giving him this envelope? What is it? Well, I've compiled what I think is a list of hitherto unknown Indo-European language root words, and I'm anxious for his opinion. His name and address are on the envelope right there, Mr. Toby Hazlitt, at 6 
Golda's Crescent. Well, make sure you don't lose it. Mama. I, I was going to mail it, but since you'll be in London tomorrow, it, you know, it might be fun for you to meet him. He's the sort who likes to sit around and discuss in the European routes for hours. It should be a lark. Well, Donnie, the swiftest partings are the sweetest, as they say. <laughs> I'll see you in exactly 11 days. <laughs> goodbye, Norman. And, and uh, uh, goodbye, Mrs. Wilkinson. Uh, uh, goodbye. <sighs> yes. Goodbye, Norman. Well, I I admit he he isn't very exciting. But his kind make the best husbands. Sure. Well, uh, let me help you pack. Huh? You better take along sensible shoes. I don't think I have any other kind. And a heavy sweater. Mama, maybe I shouldn't go. What? what? Oh, what's the use? Look, nothing's going to happen to me over there. Well, what do you want to happen? I don't know. Something. Something different. Uh, something exciting. But it won't. I don't know anyone. I, I won't meet anyone. Well, that's not true. There, there, there's this man. Well, oh, what's his name again? Tony uh, Hazlitt. Well, <laughs> he might be interesting. Mama, how can he possibly be interesting? He's Norman's friend. <laughs> Street, and this corner should be Golder's Crescent. Mm -hmm. Number two, four, aha, six. I'll just hand him the envelope and leave. I don't intend to get sidetracked by any of Norman's stuffy old. Yes. Oh. Uh, 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 my name is uh, Gwendolyn Wilkinson. <laughs> nice, how'd you do? <laughs> oh, I, uh, I have something for a uh, Mr. Hazlitt. Mr. Toby Hazlitt? Yes, well, I'm your man. Oh, oh, but you can't be. Well, why'd you say that? Uh, because I, uh... Oh, well, uh, uh, do you know Mr. Hazlitt? No. Well, then how can you say that I'm not Toby Hazlitt? Huh? <laughs> the fact that you have such sparkling blue eyes does not give you the right to deny people their identity. Well, I was sent here by Mr. Norman Radcliffe. Ah, Norman, yes. The uh, Indo-European root words, the new ones. He's compiled this list for you. Oh, yes, 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 of course, of course. The Indo-European roots. Uh, won't you come in? Well, I, uh... There. Now, won't you have a chair? Oh, thank you. Good. <laughs> well, this is the most attractive place you have here. <laughs> I, uh... I mean, I, I wouldn't have thought that you were a university professor. And why not? Well, most faculty people I know have rooms that are cluttered with books. Ah, yes. and how is Norman? What's the old scoundrel up to these days? Well, Mr. Hazlitt... No, no, you must call me Toby. And I shall call you Gwen. Oh, no one ever calls me Gwen. <laughs> well, I refuse to call you Miss Wilkinson. Too old maid school teacher, as you know. Well, the fact is, I am an old maid school teacher. Oh, I can't believe it. Well, why can't you? I mean, I look it, don't I? Well, uh... I'm rather plain. Oh, no, 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 no. I have no illusions. Well, every woman should have illusions. All she needs is, is a man who can support them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Norman and I, uh, we're both on the faculty of Metropolitan University. Oh, and what do you teach? Higher mathematics. Seminars mostly in the theory of numbers. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it really has no practical application. Oh, well, is that why everything else about you is so practical? <laughs> you know, you're not at all the way I imagined you, Mr. Hazlitt. Ah, Toby. Uh, Toby, Toby. <laughs> I, uh, I thought you'd be a stuffy, conservative old gentleman. Why? Because you're a friend of Norman. Well, who happens to be a rather stuffy, conservative, uh, young gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I really should be going. Why? Well, uh, because I have so many things to do. Ah. Well, uh, can you have them all attended to by, say, 7.30? Why? Because that's what I intend to pick you up for dinner. Oh. Uh, oh, uh, well, I, I couldn't go out to dinner with you. I. Well, why not? Why not? Hmm. 
Uh huh. Why not? Uh, I don't really know why not. <laughs> Mama, here it is, my first night in London, and I have a dinner date. Mr. Toby Hazlitt is 30-ish, handsome, and if Norman doesn't like it, well, he had no business arranging for us to meet. Uh, uh, just a minute. He's here now. I'll finish this letter later. I'm coming. Oh. Uh, Miss Gwendolyn Wilkinson? Yes. My name is Inspector Stokes. Oh, my credentials. Oh. Well, uh, what can I do for you, uh, Mr. Uh... I am afraid that you'll have to come to headquarters. Now? Yes, Miss Wilkinson, now. But why? Uh, what's wrong? You're wanted for questioning. Well, are, are you sure you're looking for me, Gwendolyn Wilkinson? Oh, yes, miss. There's no mistake. I don't understand. Uh, what is wrong? I... There has been a murder. A, a what? A murder? Who? A Mr. Hazlitt. A Mr. Toby Hazlitt. Oh, but... But, but that's impossible. I, I just thought... Who would want to kill Mr. Hazlitt? That's what we'd like to find out from you, Miss Wilkinson. Gwendolyn Wilkinson is a girl of many attainments, but one quality she doesn't have is the ability to predict the future. Isn't she the young lady who only 24 hours ago sadly announced to her mother that nothing would happen to her in London? Nothing exciting, nothing different. Well, it isn't every day that a quiet, shy, retiring girl is accused of murder. We'll all be present at police headquarters when I return with Act Two in just a few moments. For most people, the world is a well-ordered place. What happens when one is no longer a working part of the social engine and indeed discovers that the machine of society is no longer something that offers protection, but seems instead bent on one's destruction. It's bad enough to be accused of a murder that one didn't commit. It's infinitely worse to have to meet that accusation when one is a stranger and alone in a foreign country. Inspector Stokes here. Why, no, sir, she hasn't confessed. Oh, I'm quite sure she'll see reason, Sir Frederick. Yes, that's true. We have time. We have all the time in the world. I will, sir. Well, as you might have assumed, Miss Wilkinson, that call concerned you. Are you ready now to make a statement? I don't know what you're talking about. Miss Wilkinson, we're only asking you to make it easier for all concerned. You mean make it easier for you. I told you I know nothing about that murder or any murder. I don't murder people myself. I, I don't associate with people who commit murder. Th this whole thing is alien to me. My dear Miss Wilkinson. I am trying to explain and you must listen. Even if you agree to cooperate. Let me remind you that I happen to be an American citizen. Oh yes, we're quite well aware of it. I demand to see the American consul. I can assure you, Miss Wilkinson, it won't... I can accept no assurances from you. I know my rights. I demand to Very see... Very well, Miss Wilkinson, if you insist. I don't think you understand, Mrs. Uh, Plover. Uh, Mrs. Plover. Uh, is it possible you haven't heard a single word I've said? I heard every word you said, Miss Wilkinson. You heard every word I said. And you can sit there and tell me there's nothing you can do for me? I thought I had explained. But I don't understand. I have always been a law-abiding citizen of the United States. I've never asked for anything. And are you telling me that when I am being railroaded for murder, my country, the strongest country in the world, is just going to stand by uh, quietly? Miss Wilkinson, your American citizenship is not a suit of armor that protects you from the laws of the country you happen to be visiting. Mrs. Plover, uh, please. Listen, I 
I am being framed. Framed. That word, oh, framed. I hear it in gangster movies. Strange word. But now, I mean, right now, this is happening to me. I am being framed. And everyone simply stands by. Miss Wilkinson. You, ma'am, are standing by. You are subject to the laws of this land. I admit it, and that's the way it should be. But I didn't break any of the laws of this country. Well, that will be a matter for the jury to decide. Jury? Our office has discussed the case with the police. And they have a case. They have what? They have enough evidence to go to trial. What evidence? You are entitled to a fair trial and to competent counsel, and you'll get it. There has been a mistake. It's a dreadful mistake. I never met Mr. Toby Hazlitt before. If I murdered him, what was my motive? I mean, why would I kill him? Why? Miss Wilkinson, we are fully aware of the other thing. I mean, why would I want to kill... To... What? what? What other thing? Oh, you know, Miss Wilkinson. What other thing? We are aware of the activities you've been engaged in for the past three years at least. Activities? And we are aware of Mr. Norman Radcliffe's activities also. Norman? Oh, no. Norman has absolutely no activities at all. Now, if you cooperate with the police, it's possible you could get off with a relatively short sentence. This, uh, this other thing you're talking about, I mean, what is it? I'm sorry, Miss Wilkinson. There's nothing we can do for you. Well then, Miss Wilkinson, are we ready finally to face the facts? You killed Toby Hazlitt. I met Toby Hazlitt for the first time yesterday afternoon. I wasn't with him for more than ten minutes. I even liked him. I agreed to have dinner with him. Those are the only facts. Oh, no, the true facts are in this folder. Shall we go through them? Inspector Stokes, my name is Gwendolyn Wilkinson. I teach mathematics. I've never done anything wrong. Why would I want to kill Toby Hazlitt? Because he decided to defect to our side. I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. Toby Hazlitt ran the central message point for an espionage network. Well, what would that mean to me? Please, Miss Wilkinson, we are not idiots. You delivered a message to Toby Hazlitt yesterday. Will you deny it? Oh, oh that. Yes, that. But it wasn't a message. Oh, no. Of course not. Well, I mean, not in the espionage sense. It was merely a, a discussion of early Indo-European language roots. Yes, that's been an excellent cover these past three years. That's how Norman Radcliffe has been sending his coded messages to Toby Hazlitt. Norman? Oh, oh no. And why do you say no? Because... Be because you don't know Norman. Oh, the secret services of both our countries are very much aware of your Norman. Do you... Do you mean that Norman is a spy? Oh, please, Miss Wilkinson, such a display of outraged innocence is just too much. You're all in it, the three of you. The, the three of us? Norman gets the information. You, as the mathematician, devise the codes, and your mother... My, my, my mother? Yes, your mother provides a place for the activity, her apartment, and also lends it a, a certain air of respectability. Now, you, sir, you, you may be a police inspector, but uh, you, you are mad. Miss Wilkinson, why do you fight reality? Oh, maybe, maybe I'm the one who's mad. Shall we continue? Either I'm, I'm mad or it's a nightmare. I'll just have to wake up somehow. Toby Hazard had become frightened. He decided to defect. He had begun negotiations with us, but uh, there must have been a leak in our security. Your people got wind of it somehow. My people? I don't have any people. And you were sent here to kill him. I, w I was sent here to kill him? Exactly. A and that's the reason I came here. To kill him? Precisely. No, no, no. Miss Wilkinson, sooner or later, you'll have to face Oh, the... yes. Oh, look, you really, you have spun a neat little web, Inspector. But here's how it all falls apart, becomes unstuck. Send here, was I? Oh, do you know why and how I was able to come to London? <laughs> I won a prize in a raffle. 
that accounts for my presence here. Oh, yes, your organization is extremely creative. Credit where credit is due. That raffle was an excellent cover. How could a raffle be a cover? What a clever way to make your trip seem so... so random, so accidental. Inspector, let's assume for the sake of argument that I'm a member of some uh, uh, espionage group... Do you mean that this clever organization would depend on buying a raffle ticket to get me to London? Well, it's like buying a sweepstakes ticket so you can be sure of paying the rent. Miss Wilkinson, which organization sponsored that raffle? Uh, uh, the uh, Metro University Faculty and Student Association. That's correct. Now tell me, who was chairman of the raffle committee? I don't, uh... You mustn't say you don't know. It was Norman. But Norman would... He... He couldn't... uh, He is extremely ethical. And now, now we have such an innocent-looking way to get you to London. And such an excellent cover. A naive tourist. But I am naive. And I am a tourist. And you killed Toby Hazlitt. Oh, please. Please, look, whatever I say, you can turn it and twist it. Miss Wilkinson. No, let me alone. Oh, please, I'm... I'm just so tired. I can't even think straight. Just let me alone. Well, as I've been saying all along, we have time. We have plenty of time. My name is Gwendolyn Wilkinson. I didn't do anything. I've never done anything. I'm innocent. I'm not a spy. Let me out of here. Norman. Defies a call for me. Norman. Deliver the message to Toby Hazlitt. Mama. The message is death. Tell them. Oh, please, please tell them. Now, my dear, don't talk. Remember. Dr. Mars. Mama. Don't let it fester. I'm not a spy. I'm not a murderer. I have a list of places. No, no. No one would suspect a plain girl. Look, we're not. We're not spies. We're not. We're not spies. Who? Who is that? Oh. Oh, it's you. May I come in? What would you do if I said no? Uh, Oh, that's funny. What's funny? No, I I said that to someone once before. Miss Wilkinson. What are we going to do, Inspector? You'll accuse, I'll deny, we'll go round and round. Very well, if that's the way you want it. You'll keep it up long enough, and little by little, I'll start losing my mind. And after a while, I might even come to believe what you're saying. I didn't think they did that to people in a free country. I've come here this morning to suggest a way out of the impasse. Let's make a deal. You have access to certain information that's vital to us. But I'm trying to tell you... One hand washes the other. The only way out of the difficulty is for you to become a double agent. But I'm not even a single agent. Go back to your people. Tell them we couldn't break your story. And then... Report to us on a regular basis. Go back to whom? The other agents in your group. But I don't Your great asset, your tower of strength, is your air of innocence. You know, as one professional to another, I pay you the highest compliment. And as one professional to another, you owe me the courtesy of admitting it's just a front. But I am... You'll be released in one hour. Now, remember, we have your passport. And in any event, you would be no better off at home... You will be watched. Make contact with the other agents, let us know who they are, and keep us informed of their plans. Well, have we made a bargain? I... Miss Wilkinson, please accept reality. Reality? The real world you live in. These bars, this cell, these are real. And who, who am I? I... How can I keep fighting what's real to everyone else? Miss Wilkinson, 
Do you accept? But I don't know anybody. I... Oh, what's the use? I accept. I accept. Everywhere we keep running into the age-old question, what is reality? Reality is what the majority says it is. And if everybody says Gwendolyn Wilkinson is a foreign agent, then who is Gwendolyn Wilkinson to deny it? We'll have to sort it all out when I return in a few moments with Act Three. The roses on a bush. They are part of a living, breathing, functioning organism. Rose, branch, stem, leaf, root. All have a dynamic relationship. Each part is interconnected. Each is dependent on every other. When a rose is severed from the bush, the color, the freshness, the beauty stays but briefly. For the rose is no longer a part of a living world. It is no longer a member of its own society. And the separated rose begins to die. Gwendolyn Wilkinson has also been abruptly plucked from the shelter of her society. And now she struggles against an alien atmosphere. Very well, Miss Wilkinson. We'll arrange for your release. But, uh, what am I supposed to do? Oh. Oh, I see it isn't a pose. A pose? What are you talking about? And it's excellent. You create your individual character, and you will not vary from it one single iota. It's a tremendous technique. Is there any way that I can convince and you? And you never relax anywhere, anytime, with anyone. And so your pose becomes an integral part of you. It's not just a cover. It's more than skin deep. You've actually made yourself believe it. Please, Inspector, I, there must be well, something... I thought I'd seen everything in this business. Thought I knew it all. But here, actually, is an agent who does her job on... Well, it, it must be a subconscious level. What? What are you saying? It's actually possible you really don't know that you're an agent. Your conscious mind will not accept your undercover actions. You function on two levels. I... I do? Well, how else to explain it? But I... Uh... At home, half of you is the modest teacher of mathematics, and you don't know, you really don't know what the other half is doing. You don't want to know. Well, it certainly is good to have you working on our side. But I, I don't know. I'm an agent. I... Oh, Lord, listen to me. I almost believe you. Well, is there another explanation? But if I don't know who the other agents are, how do you expect me to find them? You know who they are in your subconscious mind. You'll find them. Where? Oh, you'll know where to go. Trust your subconscious. It's been working for you all these years. Hello? Wendell? Uh, Yes? Can you talk? Yes, but who... Meet me downstairs at the coffee shop. Oh, but who are you? Spano. But I, I don't know you. It's all right. I know you. The coffee shop in five minutes. Hello? 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 Anyone sitting there, miss? I, no, I... It's uh, kind of crowded. What? There are no empty tables, so are you? It's, it's all right. <laughs> Keep your voice low, Gwynny. Smile a lot. That's fine. Who are you? I told you. Sparrow. Well, uh, what do you want? Well, how was it in the cooler? How do you know me? We've been watching the house. So, who sent you? Nobody sent me. Oh, come on, love. I myself spotted you holding that big white envelope. I was only holding... Yes, you were in secret service. You had to be one of us. Now, which branch? Branch? Group, cell, any way you want to call it. Who's your leader? Uh, I, uh... I I'm going to tell you... Keep your voice low. Never know who's around. Look, I... 
I'm not who you think I am. <laughs> You're not, eh? You think I'm a spy. Oh, uh, that's an harsh word, love. We use agent. Operative is a better ring to it. See, I have a friend back in the United States. Ah, well, haven't we all? He's my fiancé. He teaches linguistics at the university, and so do I. He gave me a list of words. Indo-European root words. What? Well, you see, it's a primitive language from which most of ours is descended. Hey, you know, that's fascinating. Well, he wanted me to deliver them to Mr. Hazlitt, who is a celebrate was a celebrated linguist. And oh, is that a fact? The old boy sure had a lot going for him. <laughs> well, uh, now, Mr. Sparrow, hmm? may I be perfectly frank? There's no other way. I have to get out of this intolerable situation. The police believe I'm one of you. You mean you weren't able to... Please, to... let me finish. They offered me my freedom, provided... Uh, I was always a catch, eh? No, provided hmm? I become a double agent. Oh. Well, I had to agree, I mean, to get out of there, but I have no intention of doing it. Oh, why not? Well, because, I mean, because I'm not. I'm, I'm not an agent. I can't do it. It's, it's not my, uh, my thing. Who were you kidding, eh? You have to believe me. I, uh, somehow seem to have entered some mysterious private world. I, I don't belong here. Please, you people can clear me. What? Clear me. I mean, get word to the police. Tell them I'm not one of you. Oh, but, love, you are one of us. No. I... Now, what were you doing delivering the envelope to Toby Hazlitt, eh? But I explained that. Oh, I... love, you went there. You were following orders. And you killed him. But I didn't kill him. I'm yes, not... I know. I understand. Now, memorize my number. Just phone 11893. Tell right. Just remember, we'll be in touch. You have to feed you information. Eh, yeah, good luck, love. Oh, oh, Lord, Lord. These people. They're right. I'm, I'm the one who's mad. Well, if it's any consolation... How much longer did Toby have any hour? He was sick, he was old, he was just... What did you say? Who, who was old and sick? Toby. So that's why you've got nothing to torture yourself about. Yes. Yes, maybe you're right. Ah, you see? You're looking better already. Now, don't forget the number, 11893. Double agent. You'll be a double agent for us. <laughs> Inspector Stokes here. Who? What? You mean she just masks up in broad daylight? In full view of the whole world? Is that girl crazy? No, I... sir, I was crazy because I let all of you drive me crazy, but I am completely sane now. Now, look here, Miss Wilkinson. Don't you dare, Miss Wilkinson, me. You can't openly come to headquarters. You're probably being followed. All communication between us must be by telephone. There is not going to be any more communication between us. You were given your option. Stand trial for the murder of Toby Hazlitt or cooperate with... So, ho, oh, so I murdered Toby Hazlitt. We have enough evidence. I saw Toby Hazlitt. I spoke to Toby Hazlitt. And when I left that house, Toby Hazlitt was alive and well. Young Toby Hazlitt was alive and well. Now, what does the police force have to say about that? Well, I suppose we owe you an explanation. You? You're, you're Toby Hazlitt, and you're here. Well, I'm here, but I'm not Toby Hazlitt. I'm Fred Spellman. Matter of fact, he's Colonel Sir Frederick Spellman of the Counterintelligence. Sir Frederick? <laughs> yes, well, I happen to be the Earl of Carrollshire, but you mustn't hold that against me. You, you're an Earl? <sighs> but you mustn't call me Earl. Well, I'll call you something worse than that. I will call you an incompetent... If you'll uh, permit me to explain. Oh, you had me believing I was a spy. No, no, the man known as Toby Hazlitt was a foreign agent. He was getting old, tired, scared. So... He got in touch with us. You had me believing my own mother was a spy. Well, I arranged a meeting at his house, but he probably couldn't go through with it. Maybe the thought of betraying old friends was too much, and so, well, he had committed suicide. You had me believing my own fiancé was a spy. Norman, well, yes, he is a spy. We've been watching that correspondence for years. No, you, you can't be serious. 
We figured you were one also. All the circumstantial evidence was there. But you know I didn't kill Toby. But of course. But since we were convinced that you were an agent, <coughs> you were fair game. <laughs> you almost had me believing it. I mean, this subconscious mumbo-jumbo. The stakes were very high. They still are. We know nobody else. None of Hazlitt's associates. Were you contacted yet? Well, I... Well, why should I tell you? Were you? Look, all I want to do is go home. We could use your help. Oh, no. I'm not an agent. I don't want to be an agent. I have no intention of becoming an agent. Who contacted you? <sighs> A man named Sparrow. Sparrow? Do we know him, Stokes? Well, I know, Sir Frederick. Uh, Miss Wilkinson, perhaps you would be good enough to assist us. Oh, well, now. Oh, this is something. Listen to that. Listen to old Torquemada here. Listen to that sweet, polite tone. Well, Stokes was only doing his job. Will you help us, Gwen? Well, why? I mean, why should I? What? Wait. Why shouldn't I? It is your patriotic duty. The gang is also an enemy of your own country. Norman. That's why I'm going to help you. Because of Norman. He used me. And I don't even care about that so much. But all the time, I mean the whole time, he was a man of mystery. An adventure. An intrigue. Except when he was with me. With me, he was always Mr. Milk Toast, And I can never forgive him for that. What do you want me to do? Oh, you'll be in no danger whatsoever. And what's the good of it? Well, you'll merely call Sparrow on the phone, give him certain information that we would like him to have. Is that all I'm going to do? Uh, yes, that's all. Except when you're having dinner with me. Dear Mama, I know I'm staying longer than planned, but they have a job for me here, teaching in London. I can't imagine why Norman should have disappeared so suddenly. Well, he was wrong about so many things. For instance, he said, I would never meet an earl. You never know. Obviously, Gwendolyn Wilkinson has become an agent. But is it for the first time... Has she been an agent before without knowing it? Do all of us have another life that we're unaware of? I don't know about you, but I have enough to do in this one. As I shall explain when I return shortly. There is someone inside each of us. Fortunate is the person who knows his inner someone. And sometimes, even more fortunate is the person who doesn't. Our cast included Anne Mira, Bryna Rayburn, Ian Martin, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I can't understand why you keep asking people to take you away with them, Lucas. I think you ought to make up your mind to get out of here, Mr. Alberton. Not just so as you can take me with you, but for your own good. Maybe they'll still let you go. Let us go? They'll damn well let us go if we want to go. I sure hope so. We could still leave tonight. Better chance to get away after dark than in the daytime. Now, look, you're... You're going to have to explain that, Lucas. If you want us to take you away with us in case we go, well, you're going to have to tell us what is going on here. Well, they're all dead, you know. Uh, not me, I don't think. But all the rest of them's dead as dead can be. Been dead for years. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated. Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. I hope you enjoy this episode.
episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you've enjoyed this and want to hear more, 